Alright, don't mind. Well, you can mind, you can not mind. I don't care. Um, oh my god, the noise. Anyway, um, I'm going to be taking apart this spike that I just got made up and mocked. Um, this is the video for everything uh, that I've done. I'm kind of show you the takedowns and everything. I got a space out the tensioner so it's more over. A full chrome fender. Looks pretty good. Um, some grippy road tires and stuff like that. Well, I chose to use these C brakes. Because actually they are more reliable than the V brakes and easier to set up. And I can do <clears throat> lots of things with these and hook them up to anything. And there's a lot of room for adjustment. And these ones in particular are pretty powerful. They can clamp pretty darn hard. So it goes good. Now the part that's going to suck is when I take off the rear arm because there's kind of like a notch that I accidentally made. So, yeah. I can take it out, but when I put it back in, I can't put the bolt on easily. I'm oh, sorry about that. Easily because uh, the thing's a little cut off on the inside. And it scores the side of the bolt and messes it up. Anyway, just my old Schwinn seat from my old bike. And then a full stage 3 race motor. Looking pretty darn good. It's been sitting for a while. It's got some dust collected on her. Because it's been in a shop and yeah, dust gets everywhere. But this all be cleaned up, painted, and looking nice in a couple of days. Oh yeah, I find it reflective too. Really reflective. <laughs> but I'm thinking of painting that red because the frame's going to be red and the rear is going to be silverish. Anyway, got this nice pipe on here making some power. So yeah, I'm just going to be taking this whole thing apart piece by piece. And I'll be taking pictures so it can be like, so you, so you can see it just gradually coming apart. Like, these will come off first, and the handlebars, and then this top, the seat. Yeah, anyway. Let's get into the picture frame montage. Yeah. It took to build this thing was crazy. <coughs> well, actually, not too too long. Maybe like a month. No, like two months or so. Knocked it out. <laughs> and it came out pretty good. Um, yeah. Pretty well built frame. I built it. Pretty freaking straight. Did down the tube. I made one big flaw though. Um, it's this. You see here that bolt? I can't push it out. Because, uh, kind of stuck there. Uh, push it out. Yeah, that's the really big flaw. Kind of did some messed up welding on the bottom because I had some big holes that I needed to fill. You can you can see that from the top more, but I oh, missed. Oh, I got a hole there. Anyway, the rest of the belts are good though. You don't really see the bottom. Then that little pivot joint, that sucker's probably about a quarter inch thick wall and then I'm not sure what thickness the tubing is but it's but it's OD is one and a quarter see my welds penetrated right through I TIG welded the frame together and the rest was MIG because it was kinda hard to do some of the other stuff you can see I had to fill in 
holes like that on the bottom. I didn't do the top because oh, voice crack. I didn't do the top because I had the engine on, and I didn't feel like taking it off. Now get this out of the way. And here's the rear suspension arm. This is 19 inches long. Got dual tensioners, one for the bottom so it doesn't hit this. One for the top so it clears the brake. And that's just a guide tube to guide it to the chain. And then that's the fender mount. And obviously the wheels. That's kind of a little off on that cut. I got to trim a bit, but it's pretty good. Now this, I think I'm just going to leave that because I can't sand that anymore or else I'm going to pierce through the metal. Or bond to it. <laughs> I did get some good welds in though. Anyway, that's the frame part that makes everything happen. Then the rest of the stuff. <laughs> Quite a bit that went into this. We have uh, the engine here. It's not a light. It's a light engine, but it's not that light type of engine. Um, it's an 80cc. Um, make it about 10 horsepower. Ported, tuned, and everything. Got a carb for it. I might get a new cover because the one I have is old. Anyway, got the Allen key things. I kind of like those better. They look nicer than the regular screws. And they're better quality. Oh, Jesus. And then here's the fender. Very light. Um, I'm not sure if... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is metal. The inside looks like brass, copperish. You can see the color. Kind of looks brass. Anyway, but this thing's shiny. I got this thing all cleaned up, but I think I'm going to paint it red. Because that's just going to have to match with the bike. And the brakes. Right here, nothing special, just a good pair of C brakes. These are cast aluminum, so they're under, they used to weigh literally under a pound with the brake pads. Or maybe a pound, a pound or under, one of the two. And then, here's the bottom tensioner for the rail that goes underneath. And I don't know where my top tensioner is. But here's the swing arm bolt. This sucker was a pain to get in. Now, because uh, there was lag that I didn't see, so uh, kind of ruined it. Um, I can't put my bolt back on. Focus. So you can see that is all messed up. I'm thinking of going in there with a, f a fine flat head and straightening those out. Or just cutting a little bit off the top to get a new. I have to do that when it's on the bike though because I have to hammer it through. Which screws everything up. Or I just might get a new bolt, hammer it through, bolt it, and then cut it off. That's what I might do, but that's the more expensive option. These giant, because these... This is a half inch rod, and this was like three dollars for this little thing. Anyway, well, here's my top rail tensioner. Oh, here's my top rail tensioner. A little bit more crazy on it. I'm scared of this bending, but I don't think it'll bend because there's not like much tension on the top it's kind of loose on the top and it's tight on the bottom so I think I won't have a problem bending this 
And then I just have a, a pretty beefy shock here. It's a, I think, 150 or 200 pound shock. So it can handle quite a bit of load. Has a little bit of uh, downward screw, so I can put a bigger spring in here if I want. A bigger, softer spring for more trail riding, but this is a harder spring set for road. Um, and here's my kickstand. I didn't bother smoothing those welds out because, uh, tax pretty much. Because this is so thin, a grinder sparks will melt to this metal. That's why there's a whole crazy contraption down here. To make sure it sits smooth when the bike leans over. And because I had to do a lot of patching. Because it sucked. You can still see there's some pinholes. But anyway, just a regular spring setup. It's quite a long, quite a long shot. I mean, uh, kickstand arm though, because the bike is tall off the ground. It's not tall for the person to sit on, but it is tall off the ground. And I did get that little spot. Get that little piece there for the frame side, so it fits up in there nicely. Anyway, and here's my foot pegs, brand new suckers, and uh, these are pretty good so far. They seem durable. I'm um, dropping a couple times, didn't shatter, didn't break, didn't do nothing. Got these for 25 bucks on Amazon with pin mounts and everything. Now this is probably one of the more difficult parts to do because I had to hold everything by hand and mock it up. I didn't have any jigs, but. That's pretty much it. And then just the standard wheels and stuff. Yeah, just standard stuff. Anyway, that's it for this. I will post another video when I go painting.